Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents Podcast. And I'm being joined by Bradley, aka Sergeant. Yo. As well as Chris, aka CGM. What's up? And uh, a familiar face or voice, if you will, to the podcast. Uh, you've heard him on here before, and he's back once again. Narcos, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thank you guys for having me back. I appreciate it as always. Absolutely. You couldn't go too long without hearing that voice. Exactly. <laughs> I, I just uh, one of the things I, I would really need outside, like I want someone to narrate my life, and if it can't be Morgan Freeman, I want it to be you. <laughs> I, I will but do you that. Have to use the Duke voice. Oh. Yeah, baby. Your face, your ass. What's the difference? <laughs> That's his entire life story. You just said. <laughs> so what's been up, man? Like, I've seen nothing. I mean, anybody who's followed you on Twitter or even had any interaction with you on your streams recently will know that there's all kinds of good news. Uh, every, you know, like your career's kind of really taken off and you got this. Um, well, before I tell you, you, you say it. What, what's been going on, man? Uh, yeah, it's... Uh... It's one of those things where it is kind of unbelievable because it just changed in a matter of like days. Um, and like I went from just trying to do like just casual stuff, maybe branching out a little bit. And just on a whim, I decided to uh, try out for some audio books. And uh, I did some auditions and it ended up like. By the end of this month, uh, I'll probably have about seven or eight actual credits to my name. That's amazing. Um, walk it, us, it, walk us through that. What, what is in? Because I've, I know, like, I follow a lot of comedians, and I know what yeah. their auditions are like. What is, what is an audition like for an audiobook? An audiobook, it's mostly about the the quality of your sound and like how you can perform. So, like, uh, I would say more so cadence. Uh, so they have an audition script and they have a general outline. Hey, like we want this voice to be kind of calm and soothing or we want it brash, um, whatever it is. And you. Dialogue or whatever it may be. And uh, I shoot it out to them and they give you a response. And just like that, you sign the contract saying, hey, look at this is what I'm going to pay you. This is how it's all going to work out. And you just do, do your thing. Um, it, it's pretty amazing actually. So from the time you do your audition, what is the turnaround on them sending you the, uh, contract? Oh, like, Oh God. Uh, it's been, I've been incredibly fortunate. Uh, and it's been like maybe 48 hours before I'm Whoa. discussing what we're going to do, pay and boom, you're out the door and I just get to work on it. Um, one of my side things for a while was actually like audio engineering, like I just making things sound cool. Uh, that's why I kind of did in my spare time that I really don't talk about a lot. So I, <laughs> like, I kind of have the skills already, which is, it's just weird. I never considered it. And like, before I know it, I'm like, I'm in it deep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what is your niche? Do you have a niche yet? Cause you're so new to it or like, are you doing kids books? Are you doing, uh, what, what kind of books are you doing? <laughs> um surprisingly romance books <laughs> really <laughs> yes you got, you got that tender loving voice yeah i guess i mean it, just maybe hearing your voice makes me want to light a candle but anyway um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah put, light a cigar put it away a... raven put it away <laughs> i know <laughs> <laughs> throw a bath bomb in it but yeah it, it like the surprisingly a, a huge number of romance books and cookbooks <laughs> cookbooks cook love me wait yeah audible cookbooks audible narry true confessions of double r of course you do double r <laughs> yeah cookbooks uh there is a stupid amount of keto like cookbooks that are out now that just people want to get out there as quickly as possible because they're trying to jump on the fad and there's i mean i'm telling you i think there's like 40 books on keto right now and they all want to be narrated which i don't understand how it works like who uses an audible cookbook <laughs> i just right? if well, i needed so something you, i'd put a youtube video on and just look, listen to it i look at it so a cookbook like an instruction manual so you're reading me the instruction manual for my electronic devices like this is how you hook up your refrigerator yeah but they go by so quick it's so easy to shoot these things out because you're literally like one half cup of lettuce <laughs> 
and, 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 and that's all you do. And I'm like, do you have to say it so sensually? Well, I, I try to, you know, articulate and you smooth out the voice because you don't want the lettuce to scare you. You want people feel attached to the cookbook. And like, that's what they'll tell you to do. They'll tell oh you, like, they'll have a, it's literally like play. Like, if you ever look up like a play script, some of these folks actually have it written down, like with subtext for audio narrations where they're like, yeah, try to slow it down here or try to make it more uh, seductive. Like, it's so weird what? stuff. Yeah, it's weird. No. The celery needs to be stroked thoroughly. So, like I said, I've had, I, I, you know, I've been following you, and I, obviously, we see what you post online and everything. Sounds like this is something you've always wanted to do, and um, I had no idea after so many years of watching you on YouTube, I had no idea that that was even an interest of yours. Uh, it, it, yeah, it was one of those things that, like, I, I grew up listening to a lot of audio books, um, and. Like, believe it or not, I actually had a speech impediment as a kid and I couldn't say R's or S's or anything. Like I was very unarticulate. Um, it was very hard for me to talk. And then uh, I went to therapy and they kind of taught me to speak from my uh, my, my chest, like, mm -hmm. you, like, boom. And then all of a sudden, as soon as I learned how to talk like that, I could actually ar begin to articulate. And I used to love the narrator voices because... It was it was something that uh, brought up like a childhood memory because before I could read, like my dad would read me uh, the Star Wars scrolling credits. Oh, dude, and I remember, so cool. and I you're remember making, him. You're, you're making me feel old though, because when I was a kid, they didn't have audiobooks. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. Uh, I, I I feel sorry for you because I love audiobooks. <laughs> like it's it, it's one of those things. But I remember my dad trying to change his voice around to make it, you know, the Empire. And like it, it kind of all grew from that. So it was like a childhood dream where you're like, that would be really cool because I used to love reading. And I was like, if I could give that to somebody else, like a kid that wants to get into it, but it's too young, you can't understand the words. Like maybe if you give it some flair, it'll encourage him to do the same thing, you know, try to try to learn to read and go on his own adventure. So super <laughs> nerd moment. I, uh, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I used to have all three of the original star wars or opening text scrolls memorized like i could oh, i didn't even what? have to have the movie playing and i could recite every word of it oh dude absolutely <laughs> like somebody didn't believe me when i was in the army and we had this drinking game where every time i'd screw up i'd have to drink i never got i never had to drink lucky man i could do it i could do it drunk i can't do it anymore because i haven't seen those movies in forever but Wow. My problem with uh, the audiobooks is they're so damn expensive. You know, like one book is like, and I get it's a lot of time for the narrator, and I think it's great. And but one audiobook's like thirty bucks. Yeah, yeah but it depends depend on the book. Yeah, I was about I mean, to say I, it depends on the book. Cheap ones. I know that like I, uh, I, I listened to Heroes Die for like six bucks. And that was that's one of my favorite books. I have a few audiobooks of the uh, Tom Clancy series, and they're really good too. I forget who, what's the guy's name that does the narration, but he's really good. He sounds they, almost just like you, uh, Narcos. Are they the Jack <laughs> Ryan ones? Uh, oh. No, not Jack Ryan, no. Speaking of Jack Ryan, I just finished season two, and that show is still awesome. I haven't mm -hmm. even started. Have to yeah, I need to watch it. My problem is, is I always, when you have such a an actor who's such an iconic character, to me, I can't place him out of Jim. Bro, I don't even think about it anymore because after watching 13 hours and the first season of Jack Ryan and what was that horror flick he did where he had to be super quiet? What was that? Oh, the quiet, the quiet place. place. Or quiet place. And then, I don't even think of him as Jim anymore. It's like this guy's a legit actor now. And then the uh, and then Netflix, by the way, did a uh, or one of the others ripped them off because there's another one called The Silence, which is basically the exact same movie with like a slightly altered creature or whatever. Every movie gets ripped off. Have you seen any Asylum films? Films. Every one of their films is a rip off of another. That, film. that is true. It's like yeah. a rinse and repeat. Sharknado. Sharknado is an original idea. Oh my God! Oh, God. And then they made like five Sharknados. I mean, 
Jesus they Christ. Have, plus, they, and have, they made scri- they have scripts for like eight or nine of them. Plus, and they made two oh. Birdemics, and that's two Birdemics too much. <laughs> Aren't you? Well, happy then why the hell did you, you make us sit through and suffer that on movie night? Thanks, oh. by the way, Narcos, for recommending that movie. Easily one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my life. It, it's uh, I I. <laughs> I uh, was trying to watch like um, interviews of the, the the director on that. He actually did a tour in Chicago, and uh, the thing was is like he ha- he made these American actors read the script verbatim, uh, and he just recently learned English. So that's why <laughs> if, if if you look at most of the sentences in that movie, they they're, they are so deadpan bad awful like what you I, I can't blame them you know for delivering the way they are because like well, what are you supposed to do with that like the message is there i get what you're trying to say but it's executed at like a middle school level and it's awesome <laughs> so the actors in that movie were not given any kind of uh leeway or any kind of freedom no, he I was absolutely adamant that he had to you because it was his message. It was the message that, you know, the environment needed to be saved. And it's just like there's so many plot points that are just opened and just left open, never go back to it. it it's a, it's astonishingly amazing because you couldn't make it that bad. You couldn't do it on purpose. <laughs> you couldn't do it if you tried. Well, I mean, apparently you can because he did it. I'm just saying. This is true. You wasted five hours of my life. I'll never get back on two movie nights that we could have watched a decent movie, and you chose <laughs> graphics that a uh, that Dreamcast outperformed. <laughs> Second that's, Dreamcast. It, that's that. I think you need cinema like that because you you just need to laugh and like it's amazing like what the second one did when they tried to like raise the cave like it resurrected the cavemen like what 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 in god's name are you trying what what was the point like what do you what do you think the flintstones meets bird like the bird demic like what was that idea the flintstones are back and they're mad (laughs) <laughs> it, it makes no sense Rad you... like the uh, topless part because I think he paused it during that I will say I was kind of taken back by that a little bit because I was not at all expecting it from that kind of movie no, it's... no I mean, <laughs> what other entertainment value are you going to get out of a movie like that though um, hello the killer birds you want to watch killer birds go watch the birds the literal movie called the birds but yeah, but that's Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock. I mean, like he he made it so good. Like that's what I'm saying. Like the audacity to even try to hit a cin- like he was trying to include a cinematic history into that, and like that's <laughs> he thought he was going to outperform the birds and then make it an environmental storyline. Like you really thought that combo was going to work, and like that's and and that's why I love because you need. You need that thought process in Hollywood because I swear, <laughs> I swear to God, if Terminator is pretty much just gone, they they just shot the horse eight times. Like, did, did you Sarah see the new Connor? One? I haven't seen She's it yet, back, but, apparently. But I heard that. Okay, I don't know if it's spoilers or not, but that they killed John Connor in like the first two minutes of the movie. Yeah, I heard. I heard they're completely ignoring. The movies after Terminator Two. Like, Why they would they kill him? John Connor off? The whole <laughs> the whole franchise is based off of John Connor. <laughs> it's based on John Connor's survival. That's why they come back to kill him. So, Narcos, let me ask you this: Where do you um, wh- wh- what do you hope to accomplish doing this? Like, you, you know, if if you look down the road, maybe five or ten years, obviously you you want to keep doing this because it's something you love to do, but. What is a big picture goal? That's why I don't know. That's the the problem is is that it seems like everything that I ever was like, yeah, let's get behind that idea. It kind of floundered off, and then it was the times where I was like, you know what, screw it. Let me just break off this path I've been going down, and it's been almost instantaneous change. And I don't know if it's serendipity or some sort of weird coincidence that just is just too good of timing but 
everything is lining up and I don't know if I want to set a goal for the future <laughs> because <laughs> maybe Sometimes if I don't setting a goal is the way to go though. Just, you know, play it by ear, see how things go. Yeah, because the even my outside the streaming and online entertainment in general, like my career over there just skyrocketed overnight. And uh, it, it's weird because you almost get to a point, you know, life kind of sucks sometimes. And when it starts getting good, you can't enjoy it either because you're just waiting for the sucky time to start again. Mm -hmm. And, and that's been what... down so many times. Yeah, it's just weird because all of a sudden, I mean, like, I'm very fortunate because it all seemed to have just stacked like right in my lap. And it, I didn't try like as obsessively, I guess, or strongly as I usually would. I didn't have that laser line focus and it paid off. And it's uh big picture is just if, it, if I keep on growing in all aspects of life, hopefully I can come back stronger and make a bigger impact, you know, and actually do some damn good. And so that's what the that's the really the whole picture right now, man. I'm <laughs> just trying to I'm trying that's, to that's find That's really cool though. That you you made it happen. I mean I mean a lot of things have to go right, but ultimately you're doing what you wanted to always do. Yeah, um and I'm like and that's what's crazy, crazy about it. Because you're like I always wanted to do some sort of audiobook or some sort of voice acting and have uh have that kind of fun with it, like imagining a whole world and, you know, taking somebody else's words and putting, uh, you know, and putting some life behind them. Oh, and yeah, it, absolutely. It's, and so, it's, it, it's interesting. So, like, would, would you want to do, like, video game voiceover or animation voiceover or something like that? Yeah, yeah, I've been fortunate enough, actually, to do animation work, too. Um but like video game voiceover would be really rad. Like if I could ever voice a game for like uh, 3D Realms or for you know the guys who made Duke Nukem or do uh, even like a Bethesda game like that, I think that would be like, well, check all the boxes. Like you did a kid, you made it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that would be cool. I mean, that that would be all, especially if like they. What if what, so? Let's hypothetical if the guy who does duke's voice on a regular basis doesn't want to do it for the next game because of how badly received the last game was if they make a new game they said hey this guy does it pretty good and they oh. called you up and said hey we want you to audition for this voiceover role and then you ask what the role is and they say it's duke what do, what, what do you what do you what goes through your brain then uh cry uh <laughs> <laughs> crap pants Hopefully, we respond with a strong enough impression that I get the gig. I would, I would, I would lose it. Like if I could do a Duke Nukem, even if I could do a Duke Nukem fan mod, I would lose. I would lose my mind just because that's the sort of like you know that's like becoming Superman for a day to me. Like that's like that's video game Americana is Duke Nukem. Like Absolutely. I would lose my mind. Duke's a legend. Everyone oh. knows him. You know it's bad. Though. I don't think they'll ever make another Duke game that's going to be like a AAA game, though. No, it's uh, well, I, I don't think you could do it right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, he's he's he, all that was man back. He in the was 90s. never politically correct, though. Yeah, like, he was a womanizer. He was, you know, he was. He wasn't really a womanizer though, because the game even punished you if you accidentally killed one of the chicks. Like that, he was there to save the babes. Like Duke is a like Duke has good intentions, but like well, I, I'm he saying, has, that, look, let's be clear here. He only has good intentions towards the babes because he wants the babes. Exactly. <laughs> he's a good dude. He went through all that. You know, it's like, but like, imagine, all right, like people will go crazy. Like, like what would they do to um, what was it, Jermaine Whitehead on Twitter? Oh my it's the goodness! Same, it, it's the same. It's like. Like the online presence and like anything said <laughs> and done, like it can have consequences. For like, those yeah, of you guys, <laughs> for those of you guys who do not follow sports whatsoever, Jermaine Whitehead is a uh, f uh, safety for the Cleveland Browns. That means he plays Was. defense. Um, <laughs> and he put out a lot of tweets against uh, a lot of his haters, saying, you know, how much he hates them, how much he wishes they would die. 
he resorted to racial. Somebody too? Yep, he he uh, resorted to racial comments. Told them to watch their backs because they might get shot. Um, and this, as of this morning, uh, November fourth, fired, fired, Donald Trump style. <laughs> Step into my office. Why? Because you're motherfucking fired. <laughs> But it'll work for you. Not anymore. Yeah, but that's the like. Think about that. That is a, a that is a dude that is at least. At least I'm going to say on the low end. You know, maybe maybe making high couple hundred thousands. All right, like he might be fine. He's fine off there. Why would you, for the love of God, respond that way? Like I get it, man. Like trolls can be complete and utter jerk offs. Like that's the, that's the <laughs> truth. But holy Christ, man. Yeah, he would like, not be a good streamer. You know what's funny no. though? I say a lot. I say a lot of weird like shit on my streams because I don't care. Because I'm not getting paid for YouTube money. I'm not getting YouTube money. The yeah. one thing that I caught heat for was something that was on this podcast. Well, I don't know. Yeah, uh, that was the Mortal Kombat Jax thing. Oh, I remember that. I, you know, funny enough, I know exactly who you're talking about too. <laughs> How and many people thing. got mad at you about so it? So go ahead and rehash real quick what, what Mortal Kombat thing for those of us who don't so, know what you're talking about. So when you play when you play a game like Mortal Kombat, what are you playing it for? You're playing it so that you could kill make believe characters and have fun with it, do the goriest shit possible that is so unrealistic that it's ridiculous and it makes it fun. And then for Jax's ending for his ladder, it's all about being woke. And how black people are, were, I don't know. And how he got through slavery. And, yeah, and yeah. So what he does is he uses this time sand thing, whatever. Goes back in time. Makes it so slavery never happened. And that was like, I don't want to, I don't want to go through racial context during my Mortal Kombat stupid violent game that I play to have fun and get away from this shit. It, it always people, rears its ugly people head. People got mad. Even in video games. Racist and I was like, no, I'm not racist. Slavery was a terrible thing. I don't want to be reminded of it playing a stupid video game that I'm playing for fun. Right. You want to be able to <laughs> punch people's torsos and heads off. You don't care about... <laughs> right? <laughs> you know... I mean, it sucks to say you don't care about racial injustice because you obviously do. It's just that you don't want to be constantly reminded of it even in video games. It's like... I. I want to play a game where somebody could be in mid-match, get stabbed in the face with a pair of kunai, and then have their have the same kunai that are in their eyes smashed further into their face with a dude's knee, and then get up right after it's done and like it never happened. Well, yeah, well, you should be dead. <laughs> well, even Doom Eternal got hit with that stuff too, where they're like, I forgot what it was. They were, uh morally handicapped or some crap like that or and like it's because they're demons but like there was like there was a whole rant and rave where it was like xenophobic like it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense it's, it's that's, doom that's stupid <laughs> it, it's doom literally you shoot boom boom demons yep. like nobody nobody <laughs> why like i see demons people have just, rights too damn it People are just looking for a reason to be like angry. And I don't know why the hell everybody's so angry all the time now. Like we cannot like like it, everything has to be a cause. Everything? Like we, <laughs> everything. we can enjoy everything shouldn't have to be that's exhausting. Like everything <laughs> has to be a cause. Like that's what it's like you're okay. You have a demon shooting game. You have a guy in the NFL that just lost his freaking mind, and that's why I absolutely agree they need managers like social media managers for everything because somebody's got to come that, in there and pull the plug. That's probably a good thing, including the president. The president needs a social media manager because that's where people think that he's an idiot. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that's the problem. If Sometimes, he kept his mouth shut on Twitter. He like literally some days hate. I wake up and I check my Twitter feed and the, the, the number one, the first tweet I see is like in all caps, stop the witch hunt. Like, okay. Like sometimes I got to pitch myself. Is this actually the president tweeting this stuff? But then it's like, he, the only thing he's done while he's been in office is everything he said he was going to do. That's true. See, funny. double R doesn't fully support the president. He just admitted it. 
I don't support his Twitter actions. I think he's an idiot when he's on Twitter. I think well, yeah, exactly. I, I support him as a in his policy and stuff, but I think they should take away his phone. <laughs> yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. Like with politicians in general, like it, it's so it's so nasty. It's like it, I've never I never expected it to be nastier than what I remember from like Bush. Like you know, it's just like ah no, it couldn't, it couldn't be this bad again. <laughs> like I mean, I just wish people really didn't like really didn't get so hurt over every single thing and it's just like on both sides it's all extremes there's somebody's got to be able to sit around and talk one day and i can't wait for what history <laughs> i cannot wait for what the history books say about this time because it oh is beyond anything i would have ever expected in my life bro a golden I, age a silver age a bronze age i legit uh, <laughs> I legit saw an ad because I get uh, those. Um, this is the woke age. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I get I get those ads, you know, like everyone does in the mail. The I think it's direct mail, um, and it's some kind of like one of those name brand like furniture warehouses where they, they'll rent you furniture and everything. I'm like, huh? I wonder what this is, dude. They have a chair that's called the anti man spreading chair. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh my god! What? But it's literally got a block sitting right where your crotch would be. Uh, and and it, it, it's set there to prevent you from spreading your legs when you're sitting out, you know, on a chair. There's for a man. legit reason why it's uncomfortable for a guy to sit the same way that it's... Exactly. That exactly. We have I... things there that <laughs> women don't. That if you put your legs together while you're sitting down... It hurts. It can hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. especially if you're sitting for a long period of time note yeah. to uh the audience sitting on your whoopee cushion is definitely going to hurt so don't <laughs> like look it's not that i'm being i'm not being a jag off i look i just need to air it out sometimes i need to get it i gotta get it loosey-goosey you know exactly. everybody i don't want to choke the little guy you might fall off it just doesn't like yeah i don't know like there, there's a difference it's just like uh i just wish it wasn't I wish it wasn't so silly because like, doesn't this seem like a parody? This, it feels like having an SNL skit all oh, the yeah. time. Every, every so, time I go on Twitter, <laughs> it's something straight out of mad TV. Shout out to those who are, who so, are old enough to know what that is. <laughs> so a buddy of mine from the army, he worked security at a, a venue that does concerts and arena football and all that stuff. Well, this, this lady was at this concert and she was getting belligerent and she's trying to fight everybody and he's got to try and escort her out. Well, when he grabs her, she turns around and she slaps him in the face. So he goes and grabs her, holds her arms back behind her and escorts her out of the building. Later on, he got a summons to court for sexual harassment because wow. he, he, when he grabbed her, he grabbed part of her boob. Oh my lordy! She's slapping the hell out of him. What's he supposed to do? He's gonna grab whatever he can get. <laughs> he probably like, just got some side boob action anyway. Ah, you know, every, everybody's got a cop of feel somehow. Well, he got further than you <laughs> will, Double R. Uh, wouldn't you like that, Chris? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, well, you're a dick. I, I, <laughs> why do you get any? Because you're too busy abandoning women at casinos to. <laughs> what? See, the problem is, Pardon? Raven's Raven's standards are too high, and Chris has no standards and still can't get anybody. <laughs> Not true. I just know what I'm looking for. That's all. Oh jeez. So how's married life treating you, Narcos? Oh God, <laughs> I love my wife. Yeah, no, it's 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 about the same. I've been with her for seven years. It's just like, yeah, now we just wear a ring all the time. And it's that's the hardest part is the ring. I'm like, I've never I hate okay, let me explain this before I say it. I I grew up in a small town uh before, you know, moved around the Chicago land area and everything else. But every man that I ever saw with rings was either like a former like 
failed like football like high school star or like a dude who believed he was a wizard and <laughs> I, I can't get that image out of my head because like you know it's like dudes either wear one ring because they're married or they wear like wear five rings because they think they're gandalf like that's the law <laughs> like, i'm pretty certain somewhere there's a universal law of balance on that and i just i don't like rings and like I wear it, I'm like, man, every time I look down at myself, it's just like Lingardian Leviosa every single time. <laughs> so but, yeah. I had I was the same way with my first marriage, but my first marriage only lasted six months. So oh. it's probably not the best way to go. But this one, um, this was our tenth anniversary this year in February this year. Oh, congrats. So congrats. I kind of don't even notice it anymore. I never I never really take it off unless it's like I notice it and like I'm going to rub my beard or something, and I smell my finger, and it smells all sweaty and shit. Like, <laughs> it's probably because I never take this damn ring off, and when I take a shower, it's still on there, so like it doesn't get cleaned as well. Mm. And I'm like, I should probably take that. that off every once in a while. That's my own nastiness, you, but you know, you, I mean, for you know, what do you guys think about having like a instead of a physical marriage ring, having like your ring finger tattooed? No. No, 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 I no, think no, no, that's no. dumb. I don't know. I always, I, I kind of like the idea. We almost got uh, See, a wedding like ring the like idea tattoos. So you have to go through a divorce. Well, hopefully, I, I don't know. I, I think after well, seven well, years, like, I think I'm all right. Like, listen, you know, if I, nobody <laughs> wants a divorce. But <laughs> I got, like I said, my first marriage didn't last very long. Well, I mean, it lasted a lot longer than it should have. I got. Married right before I deployed to Iraq. Uh, Six months in Iraq, I find out my wife was cheating on me. So I started going through the process of divorce. So fourteen thousand dollars and oh three years goodness. later, I actually had. I I was on my second deployment and I was talking to the JAG officer in Afghanistan. He's like, "Hey, uh, why are you still married?" Like, because she won't sign divorce papers. He's like, let me look, see what I could do. He's like, what's your home of record? Like, West Virginia. He's like, okay. And you were married in New York? He's like, yep. Well, your home of record takes precedence. He's like, really? He's like, yeah, go to, when you go on leave, go home, file for divorce, tell the judge what's going on. They'll, they'll run the, they'll run an ad in the local paper saying, hey, you, this person's trying to get divorced. You have this much time to get a hold of us. It's 30 days and then have somebody with the power of attorney go in and sit in the courthouse and sign your divorce papers for you. You just have to be on the phone with the judge at the time, sign it and it's done. And you don't have to so, be there. No, huh. no, this is only for deployed. Like if you're, if you're away from home due to government shit. Wow. Huh. Apparently, this is, this is the way it works, and it's only for certain states. West Virginia is one of those states. Um, so when I went to the courthouse, I was like, is this going to be run in her local paper or this local paper? <laughs> They're like, it's going to be run in this local paper. I was like, great, because she's in New York, and this is West Virginia. She's never going to see it. Huh. So, <laughs> funny, the, the last part of this story, well, second to last part of this story, really, I come back from Afghanistan. And I get to stop paying her money because the army makes you pay her a cost of living, which at the time for me was like $600 a month, which is why she wasn't signing divorce papers because $600 is a free money for her. And uh, huh. she stopped getting the check. So she called my commander on his direct line. No. Oh, my no. commander called me into his office. He's like, hey, you got your divorce papers? I was like, yep, right here. Because I carried it with me all the time. All the oh, fucking God. time because I knew something was going to happen. So I brought him in, gave him to him. He's like, yeah, according to this, he doesn't know you shit. You call back here again, I'm going to file harassment charges on you. Click. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So oh, the last part of this story, the last interaction I had with my ex-wife, I've moved. I've gotten out of the Army. I moved, up to, I moved down to uh, Albany, New York from Watertown. Moved in with my wife in our first apartment, which was above a funeral home because it was stupid cheap and our downstairs neighbors are quiet. <laughs> yeah, they're <God>. dead. <laughs> oh, oh <my> God. <laughs> I get it. I get somebody ringing the doorbell downstairs. So I go downstairs and answer the door. He's like, are you Bradley Berry? He's like, yep. He's like, been served. Like, Fucking oh, this. God. So I go upstairs. Uh, 
because I'm dumb. My wife is smart. That's why we even each other out, you know. So I let her look at it. She's like, these are child support papers. I don't have any kids. Yeah, according oh. to this, you you do. Uh-oh. So she goes and she goes and does some snooping around, and my ex-wife has pictures of her baby on Facebook. Her baby's black. She's white. Oh God. I'm white. Two of these things don't make the other. <laughs> Haven't you heard of miracles? So, so what had happened was I called the courthouse where she lives, where she was trying to file for child support papers. I was like, listen, say my kid. It's like, can you prove it? I was like, yep, I can send you a picture. I could send you my deployment orders for when this kid was supposed to be conceived. I could send you my leave papers saying that I wasn't even in the country at the time that this kid was conceived. I was like, all right, just send it here. So I sent it. And then the actual courthouse sent me a letter of apology back. <laughs> and then they filed charges on her for filing a false report. Wow. What? what? That is quite the story. <laughs> yeah. I lead an interesting life in all the wrong reasons. Huh. <laughs> well, I think she deserves it. Yeah. I don't know what she's doing now. Last time I heard from her parents, she was on drugs or something. Not doing very well. Oh, so. my God. I'm sorry well, to hear that, man. I'm not sorry to hear that she's not doing very well. She's a cop. No, I'm sorry that it, <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> but, yeah, that was a lot of horse shit to go through. $14,000 in New York. Couldn't get anything done. $300 in West Virginia, and 30 days later, I'm divorced. Must be nice to have that kind of pull. <laughs> yeah, that bit. I, I, I think I'll spend the 14 k on something else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, well, I mean, that's I'm fourteen thousand dollars over three years. It wasn't like I shelled out fourteen thousand oh, dollars all at once. I had to file like I had to file four or five times, and every oh, time you file, God. there's a filing fee and a paperwork fee and court fees. And... Okay, so getting a, a a wedding ring tattooed on is not the move. No, no. I actually had her name tattooed on my arm, but I drew the tattoo, so I drew it so that if I ever anything ever did happen, I could cover the name up with my last name. Legend. It worked. That's always a thing, though. I'm not sure if I could ever get a tattoo. I don't know. I think that would be about the only thing. Tattoos are addicting, like bro. Once you get your first one, you'll want another one. Like, I don't want to look like Takeshi 6 9 or whatever. I don't want to have that <laughs> crap. But, you know, well, like... You just got to be responsible know. with it. And don't get tattoos on your face, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't get me. That's so, pop- that's so popular now. I just remember... I would never in my life Never in yeah. my life ever I, think about like, like well, how could you do like how could you do that to yourself? Like I wonder if there's some dude developing a laser right now that is going to be a trillionaire. You know that's going to be able to remove tattoos because some of these kids gotta regret that. They gotta regret that one <laughs> every yeah, single day like, they wake how up. How do you explain yourself at a job interview? I, I drew all my I drew all my own tattoos except for the one on my chest, and that's the only one I don't like. I don't know though. Well, that like, one's that's usually the... covered up, right? So, all of my tattoos are usually covered up. I I don't have any tattoos that show through a t-shirt. Yeah, that's why I say like that's always a good rule of thumb. If you're like not sure, like get it somewhere it can cover up because like a lot of these people are man are like the throat tats. Like it's like I I used to work with this guy and I'm just gonna call him Tyler. And Tyler was like a little goober kid, you know, like when he first started working. <laughs> And I was like, I was still in retail. We worked at a freaking office max. And he, like, he got hired wearing basketball shorts and flip flops. And the basketball shorts had a spaghetti stain on them. And that's <laughs> how I never wow. forget this kid. And he got <laughs> hired. And by the time I left that place about two years later, he was deep in some weed. Deep. <laughs> and that, that boy. I, now he works as like a chef. He's got tattoos all over his neck. He's got a rose over his eyebrow. <laughs> and he literally what? just, his newest one, and I, sh- and I kid you not, is love written in Chicago Gothic font. And oh it looks God. like metal that's coming out of his face. It is Why, it's horrendous. It's, see, my thing is when I get, tat- when I get a tattoo, it's not that I'm ashamed of it that I don't want it to show. It's because I don't want, I don't want to look unprofessional when I'm at work. Exactly. 
and have my tattoo showing. My manager has sleeves, but he's a big dude. And if I ever, if I ever had a problem with it, I still wouldn't say anything because he'd probably be my ass. <laughs> this is a guy that put a squat rack in his office so that way when he has downtime, he just goes over there and does squats. Oh my, oh my God. God. That is a, that dude's that's huge. an alpha chad for Absolutely. sure. <laughs> Completely an alpha. I, <laughs> you're an IT manager doing doing 300, 400 pound squats in your in your office. No, no way, no way in hell. <laughs> I've that's... never seen a manager drop more f bombs either. That dude says fuck more times than I've ever heard anyone say it. And I used to listen to ICP. Oh no, oh no! Don't don't admit that, dude. I used to listen no. to ICP too. I still don't know how magnets work. God, <laughs> please, please tell me that you're kidding. Please tell dude, me. I used to listen to ICP and Corn, dude. No, please, you. Yes. I magnets. How do they work? Oh my listen. God, I'm s- real. You just blew my mind, dude. I I could never. If there was one person I would look, like, if I closed my eyes right now and I said, "You know what? He listens to corn and ICP." It would not be you. It Limp would Biscuit never be and you. The whole bunch. Oh, I never got no. it. I always thought they were a bunch of queers. Please tell me you didn't. Get, did you get cornrows? I didn't get cornrows. <laughs> oh, thank God! But I did it all thank for the Bro, if you got cornrows and you still had your 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 YouTube icon, just like your headshot with. The, and you took the hat off on your headshot on your YouTube icon and had your cornrows in, you would look like Colin Kaepernick. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know like I, I I look back at the 90s and I was like man it's not as bad as the 80s were like with the crazy outfits and everything but like bleach blonde tips were a thing and too many dudes with cornrows like <laughs> counting crows dreadlocks, crows, dreadlocks. Yeah. oh god bleach blonde tips and then what about those seashell necklaces oh oh god, god. remember that. <laughs> I don't see. Yeah, that's why I was like, man, '90s weren't as bad. But yeah, no, dude, it's it's real bad now that I'm looking back at it. Like haircuts suck still. Not as bad as the '80s, but still, they're they're pretty crappy. Bro, Vanilla Ice had the greatest hair in the Ice Ice Baby video. Oh my! Did you ever see? Like he was wearing a plastic hat. Oh my god! I know the next movie night for you guys. Cool as ice. Did you? Have you guys heard of it? Oh no! Oh no! We're not doing that. (laughs) I'm making an administrative they, decision, executive if decision. You want to see a, if you want to see a movie with Vanilla Ice, it's got to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. Yeah, that was so random at the end, though. He kicks him into the concert where Vanilla Ice, like, why is Vanilla go Ice ninja, like... Go, Ninja, go. <laughs> Think about how obscene that scene is. Think about that. He it, kicks they, they fed those monsters donuts. Oh, my God, you're right. Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And they like oozed it like they were like clearly tires or some shit. Yeah. Like I don't. Wait, what, why movie, was... what movie was he in? Where he was like a cashier at some sporting goods store, and he had like roid rage throughout the whole movie. I can't remember what it was. Sorry, he I'm had, not like, well Side part. It was just I can't remember. We had to look it up. Oh God, I think I know what you're talking about. I just don't remember. I'm gonna look yeah, up I don't know. Vanilla Ice is a, a like. Doesn't he work as like a a home improvement guy now? Yeah, like isn't? Yeah, he has his own home improvements. His own home. He flips houses. Uh, what yeah. the hell was the market like? How do you pitch that idea? It's just like, hey, Vanilla Ice. Oh, we're just wondering how how's the house flipping thing doing? And it's just like I don't understand. Are we really that much? Out, we're out of ideas. Like we can't, we, we can't <laughs> think of a single thing better. Listen, like they ran. <laughs> when there's a TV show, that's premise and name is called Ninety Day Fiance. Any show is possible. Bro, he was in. He was in Clerks. I didn't even know he was in Clerks. What happened to TLC? <laughs> the I think happened. there's a new. I think there's a show that's worse than 90 Day Fiance where they like have people and you fill out like a profile 
and then they match you and you like get married immediately and then you build your relationship from there. Are you no. talking about The Bachelor? Holy shit. No, it was, Whoa. I saw it, I was flipping channels one night and it's like 90 Day Fiance, but it's like, takes it to the extreme. And then like after, like it may be 90 days too, then you decide if you're going to stay together. Here's the thing or... though, as bad as those shows sound to people who have any kind of a bit brain cells left, there's a large number of people who watch those things like crazy and tune in every single time there's a new episode. Well, wow. it was it was the uh, the Adam Sandler movie. That's my boy. Oh God! Well, that, that God. Jack and Jill. But uh, he also did voice acting for a Yu Gi Oh movie where he did the voice of Joey Wheeler, Ace Attorney. Oh my God! There you go. I'm so done. That, that, <laughs> that's what Adam Sandler. Jack and Jill is another awful. God awful oh Adam movie. Sandler's he he went way downhill real quick. But people still pay, like that dude is still making bank. Oh, still yeah. making off bank. He's got like a eight movie deal with Netflix or some shit. But that's what I don't like. It's not funny anymore. He's been doing the same joke for thirty years now. <laughs> like it's the same, and like, it's always the same cast too. It's like you know you're gonna see Snyder. You know you're gonna yeah. see that other um forget the the Jewish dude with the, the long hair. From, from Grandma's boy. Pretty yeah, much. It, Actually how, just how about is, every guy from Grandma's Boy. <laughs> does anyone know why Rob Schneider was popular? I have no idea. Um I think I, he's he's just popular. Uh, I don't find him funny. Adam Sandler's I friend. Him. <laughs> I don't find him funny at all. I understand why Chris Farley had movies. Like Chris I, Farley I, was I get, funny. He was a funny I get, dude. I guess I get Chris Spade Farley. Too. Yeah, I can see them, but I like really go back and look at like Deuce Bigelow. Really go back and oh. watch that film. It is garbage. <laughs> like it's so <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I remember the thinking that was the bad. funniest. The like, only reason to watch the those animal... Bigelow movies was was for Eddie Griffith. Because that guy is the only funny part of that movie. I, yeah, I just don't get it. Like, I don't get... The, or even how the Wayans brothers are still making movies. How? David Wayans was funny back in the day. Yeah, but like, what yeah, like Major Pain, that shit was funny. It was. It was a... Like, he, and then uh, he Blank the Man. shit out of Bam Bam Bigelow. <laughs> I remember that. I'm going to put the left side of my boot across the right side of your face. Try it and punch them in the throat. He's like, You thought you were going to kick me? You calling me a liar? <laughs> she was funny. So, um, if you guys are down, um, I think we should get into our week 10 NFL picks. Can you believe it's already been week 10? This season's been flying by yeah, for me. I'm so glad my Steelers are. I'm so glad NFL season's almost over because I it's can't. It's almost it over. It's only oh, halfway Chris. over. It's not even halfway over. You still have to play off and everything else, too. <laughs> You're such a. He's such a loser. Listen, you have the same record as no. As, I have as the Dolphins. I have two teams that have been champions in two years. I don't think that qualifies me as a loser. You're a loser. I can confirm that you're a loser, Chris. When have your teams won a championship last? Twenty twelve. Uh, the Penguins won like three in a row, right? Yeah, but two. I guess our teams don't exist if they don't come from Washington. <laughs> what a loser. No, they're. Double R hasn't had a championship Wait, in nearly ten must, years. It's 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 easier to find a championship team when you follow literally every sport. Exactly. I don't follow every you sport. You don't have a sport. Them. You have multiple. Like, Wrong. Football, I follow hockey, the big that's four. It. I don't know. Chris is just going to be Chris, honestly. Yeah, well, he's just going to. He's he's never happy. No. Um. <laughs> so let's get into it though um, So it's just going to be three of us doing picks uh, me, uh, Narcos and I already talked about it prior um, So we're going to be doing football picks Should I, I think the order is going to be um, I think it'll be Sarge, then Chris, and then me So I'm going to say the matchup Sarge, you go ahead with it Chris, you follow him, alright The first one's going to be the Thursday night game 
the 4-4 four and four Oakland Raiders are going to be hosting the 4-4 four and four LA Chargers, uh, California. Raiders. Um, so you're taking the Raiders. Yeah. All right, Chris? Uh, Chargers. I think I am going to take the, the Raiders purely because they're playing at home. I think this is going to be a game where a dumpster that's literally on fire is going to look at that and say, Jesus Christ, it's such a dumpster <laughs> fire. <laughs> exactly. Um, Sunday morning games, uh, four and five Tennessee Titans host a six and three Kansas City Chiefs, who I believe at the time should have Patrick Mahomes back from what Chiefs. I'm hearing. Uh, Chiefs just because, yeah, yeah, no, it's the Chiefs. <laughs> okay, Chris? I'm taking the Chiefs because you don't know if the Titans are going to be the Rams or the Redskins in the given week. The Rams aren't that good this year either. Well, I just think that, you know, one week the Titans look like they're great. And you think, okay, they've turned the corner and the next day look like they are a minor league team. All right. Next game, the Zero and eight Cincinnati Bengals host the six and two Baltimore Ravens. I'm taking the Ravens heavy in this one. I think I'll go with the Bengals. Bengals Shut get the up. win. No, you're not. <laughs> oh, it's the Ravens. I hate the Ravens, <laughs> but I have to go with the Ravens. I wish the Bengals would win. I want the Bengals to win that game, and, well, but it's going to be the Ravens. I think Terrible Taylor will be fired. Oh my after god! After week seventeen, do you have a nickname uh, for every single person? You have nicknames to people that aren't even associated with your team. Uh, he's just a horrible hire, horrible coach. I think he's lost the locker room. I think uh, I don't think I. I think I'd fire him now. Okay, so you're taking the Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just said that. <laughs> Well, he's just ruined the franchise. Well, there no, wasn't much of a franchise anything. to be there. It was ruined before that. Yeah. All right. Next game, the two and six Cleveland Browns uh, host the six and two Buffalo Bills. I'm gonna take the Bills. Bills look good this year. They do. I'm gonna take the uh, Bills because Fat So Freddy has uh, oh my god hand out either. All right, and I'm taking Cleveland. the Bills too. No nicknames. I don't have any reason. Just because the Bills are just better. Next game is the 2-6 and six Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers, who, by the way, took the Seahawks into overtime last week. Um, they host the 3-5-1 and one Arizona Cardinals. Oh, do I have to pick somebody? You ha- someone has to win. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the refs because <laughs> neither of these teams are any good. But if I had to pick one... Tampa, I guess. I, I don't know. This is one of those games where I really don't give a shit. Yeah, I'm gonna pick Arians to beat his old team, and I think in another year or two he'll have the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers turned around. Okay, I'm taking Tampa to win pretty handedly in this one, despite them being a two and six organization. Uh, the losses they've had have not been largely by a, a, a pretty. They've been by a small margin. Um, so I, I'm going to take the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, especially since they're playing at home. They're going to get the dub this week. Uh, next game. Oh, these two teams share an NFL stadium. The one in seven New York Jets versus the, uh, they're hosting, I guess you want to call that. They both play in the same stadium. They're hosting the two and seven New York Giants. <laughs> um, which who, the, the by the Jets way, they lost on Monday in the football tonight. On the against the Cowboys, but the Jets are coming off a loss to the Dolphins. Yes, doesn't get much worse than that. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna, I I pick New York to win. It's a it's a home game for either team. Look at it that way. The Giants, I guess. It's it's hard to pick against a team that didn't lose to the Dolphins. It's a real measuring stick of success. Let's see. Did you win <laughs> against Miami? No? Okay, you suck. <laughs> Chris? This is the shit bowl. But, um... It's a really I think it's I'm just looking be for a, your pick. I think it's going to be a miserable game, but I guess I'll take the uh, 
Giants. Okay. Next game, the on fire seven and two Green Bay Packers hosting the five and three Carolina Panthers, which I don't believe still have Cam Newton yet, and I think they're happy about that. So, I think the Panthers have a good shot at this game because you consider with with uh, Allen as their quarterback, they've only lost one game, and he's pretty, he's been pretty good for he's them. He's been he's been and doing very well Christian for them. Mc- Christian McCaffrey is in the the uh, MVP conversation right now because he's killing it. That dude is running like a fiend. You know who else he's, is he's... in that conversation? Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Well, they're both running backs, so I guess it, it makes sense. Okay. Well, so, I, and... <laughs> we've had this discussion before. So, yeah. I'm, I, it's hard to pick, though. Uh, I think I'm... Where is it at? Is it in Green Bay? It's in Green Bay, correct. I'm going to take Green Bay. Okay. Chris? Mm, I guess Packers, but I think the Panthers give them a run for their money. Okay. I'm going to take the Packers as well. I mean, we're coming off of a week where every single NFC North team lost. Um, and I think the Packers are going to be uh, they're going to be doing handling business as we get into the playoff stretch. I'm just, I'm going to stay with the Packers. Uh, next game up is the three and five Chicago Bears hosting the three four and one Detroit Lions. I've all, I've picked against Chicago the last two weeks. I'm going to take the Bears, but I think I got to take them this week as well. I agree with you, Chris. Uh. I've picked the Bears every week, though. I guess I'll pick them, but I think it's time to bench Miserable Mitchell. Oh, my God. You're just making up nicknames at this point, (laughs) and it's getting very frustrating. (laughs) Next game up is, um, oh, we're going into the, nope, not the late afternoon games yet, still the morning games. The 7-1 New Orleans Saints hosting the 1-7 Atlanta Falcons. Usually this would be a rivalry. Really? Usually, it really, really this is Saints. Saints, Saints, Falcons are garbage. Chris, uh, Saints by 24. Okay, I'm gonna also take uh, the was Saints. A very angry 24. There. That Jeez. was 24. 24. 24 because Quitter Quinn. Oh, my team. dude, you, you are not invited <laughs> on the Stop podcast it, anymore. You're done. Um, <laughs> hey Narcos, you got you got a free Monday every week. You can start recording. <laughs> um, oh, he's like, oh, somebody's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Narcos, I have a free we, Monday? we want you to replace Chris. Okay, perfect. So we can call ourselves a three cent <laughs> podcast. Nar Chris is here now. <laughs> All right, only a couple more games. We're getting to the nighttime games now. The um, five and three Indianapolis Colts host the wow. The Miami Dolphins have one win. The one and seven Miami Dolphins. I'm going to take the Colts. Colts thirty one. Dolphins uh, twenty. No thirteen. Thirty one thirteen. Okay. I'm going to take the Colts as well. Uh, I think uh, their defense is tremendous. They were one Adam Vinatieri kick away from winning that game last week, and he totally shanked it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the thing with the Dolphins is, real oh quick, God. is that they jump out to a quick lead every game almost, and then they just fade, and the other team kicks their ass in the second half. Right. Um, next game is the four and four, Cle- uh, not Cleveland. My bad. You are definitely not Cleveland. You're a lot better than them. Uh, the four and four Pittsburgh Steelers hosting the five and three LA Rams. I'm going to take the Steelers. Not because I'm a homer, but because their defense is like top five mm-hmm. right now for turnovers and sacks. The only reason they're not a top five overall is because the yardage they give up. Are you I'm taking, taking the Steelers? The Rams. It, it, yeah, I'm going to take the Steelers at home. Oh, Chris is going the were, other way. If You're taking playing, the Rams. If they were playing at the at the Rams, 
I would take the Rams, but I think they're not going to lose it. I don't think they're going to lose it. Chris, why the Rams, just out of curiosity? I just think they have better talent right now overall, and the Steelers are playing a third-round quarterback, or third-string quarterback. Who, Second-string uh, quarterback. Third-string quarterback is Doug. Playing Mason Rudolph. Get your facts straight before you start lipping. <laughs> Well, I mean, Rudolph has been <laughs> he's been okay at times and other times he's like not okay. So he's not he's not Ben for sure, but Ben also throws five picks in games sometimes. Yeah, I, I got to say I'm taking I, the Steelers. I just think the Rams have the Steelers talent. have more to play for than the Rams do right. That's true part of what it comes down to for me because right now they're still what they're two games behind the Ravens for the division they're they're one of the uh wild cards at the yeah, season right they now. have a lot to play for they're they're fighting for a division at this point um next game is going to be the Sunday night football game and you know it's not a, a a prime time game in America without the Dallas Cowboys being involved the five and three Dallas Cowboys host the six and three Minnesota Vikings. I want the Vikings to win so bad because I hate the Cowboys. The Cowboys are garbage. The only reason the Cowboys are called America's team is because the Steelers didn't want it. <laughs> that's that's very true. In the, in the 70s, when the Cowboys picked up the moniker of America's team, it was actually offered by the NFL to the Steelers to make that their label, and they decided not to go with that because they wanted to represent the Steel City. Exactly. No, I mean, it's one of those things like... I I, I don't... Yes, I'm American, but I don't I don't view them as my team. They don't represent the country. The best players on that team were all Coke addicts in the nineties anyway. Exactly. I'm sorry, Chris, who are you going with in this game? <laughs> mm, as much as it pains me, I just don't think the Vikings are as good. So I'm taking Dallas. Yeah, you know, I mean, Dallas was losing almost the whole first half tonight, right? To the Giants. Yeah, but the Dolphins have been ahead in a lot of their games, and look what happens. Well, the Cowboy, I'm just saying the Cowboys aren't as great as Colby would like you to believe they are. No, but I, <laughs> I think the Vikings are very mediocre. I, I've got to side with Chris here. I don't think. Uh... Dallas is a great team, but I do think that they're quite, quite a bit better than uh, Minnesota, especially since they're a, and they're playing at home. You already know that team's a different animal playing at and home. And the refs will be on their knees in Jerry yep. World. Yep, you also have that. We can't can't forget about that. <laughs> Listen, they're playing the Cowboys, not Tom Brady. So, and then finally. Monday Night Football. Oh, this is going to be a good one. It's a rivalry game, and, and for once, both teams are actually doing quite well. The undefeated, the only remaining undefeated team, it was the Patriots also, but the Ravens took care of business. Thank you. Uh, the 8-0 San Francisco 49ers host the 7-2 and Seattle Seahawks. I'm going to take the 49ers. I, I think that they're going to win pretty 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 handedly they're playing at home and they have the, i think the number one defense in the nfl right now uh one yes of the top offenses. one of the top offenses and the number one defense correct so I, i'd take them to win um niners no nicknames just straight up pick i, I respect <laughs> that <laughs> the seven salty, times uh, shanahan oh um, salty shanahan there we go there it is. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take San See Francisco. what I have to deal I, with here? I do believe it's going to be a close game. They're not going to win handedly, in my opinion, just because it's an interdivision rivalry game. These two teams hate each other almost as much as the Ravens and Steelers hate each other. Um, but That's not I, fair. I think Ravens and Steelers don't like each other, but they have a mutual respect. That Well, the, this is true. They're not the Bengals. Oh, God, no. No team is the Bengals. There's only one Bengal. So, uh, I'm taking the 49ers. Uh, so, there we go. That's our Week 10 picks. 
Um, I think the Bengals will make the wild card. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, technically, they're still Keep in dreaming. the so They're this not is, mathematically eliminated. This is going to do it for this week's edition of the Two and a Half Cents podcast. Um, we will be back for probably the, the week of Thanksgiving. Um, we appreciate Narcos for coming on here and sharing the good news. Of It really is good to hear um, all the amazing new things, It's a new chapters that you've opened up in your life. You know, I've been watching you for... A number of years now and uh and actually we got to meet up a couple times that was cool um we got to yeah. do that again sometime real soon um absolutely but i'm proud of you man i want to say that i think i speak on all of our behalf that we're proud of you continue on the good work yeah, bro <clears throat> um yeah. and uh without and this is going to be sarge chris narcost and myself raining ravens checking up out of here we will see you in a couple weeks i'm Take going care. to play call of duty <laughs> i'll join you let's go <laughs> Have a good one, man. And the Nationals <laughs> are champions. Chris, shut up. <laughs>